Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Smoke Signals. I'm your host, Ethan Morris, and i um, coming to you from right here in the mountains of North Carolina. And um, today's show, I'm going to be doing uh, another ranking show. Um, today, as you can tell from the shirt I'm wearing here, I'm going to be ranking the albums of the um, hugely successful power trio um, and super group, if you will. From the late 70s and early 80s, the police. Um, police uh, formed in 1977, consisted of Steen uh, or Gordon Sumner on bass and vocals and chief songwriter, uh, Andy Summers on guitar, um, and Stuart Copeland on drums. Um, Stuart was actually the one who came up with the name for the band, and he had been in a prog rock band called Curved Air before that, um, that released quite a few albums in the uh, first half of the 70s. He's the only American in the group. Um, he had uh, lived all over the world um, due to being an army brat, basically. My family was in the military. Um, he has a famous brother, um, Miles Copeland, um, is the one who started IRS Records. Um, that had everybody from uh, Flesh Jones, Go-Go's, R.E.M. were all on that. Um, and um, they'd actually, Miles Copeland had actually um, befriended Mike Mills and Bill Berry before they were in R.E.M. Um, it kind of got them into punk music um, back in the late 70s. Um, Sting had played jazz, um, was a virtuoso bass player and composer, and had been in other bands. Um, Andy Summers had been in The Animals at one point, Soft Machine, so he had a prog background as well. Um, the police were... Um, Unlike their contemporaries coming out in 76, 77, the other punk and new wave bands who were all in their late teens, early 20s, the police were in their late 20s. Um, so they had kind of already been established playing music. Um, and um, only five albums, um, so it was a pretty quick list. Um, but I'm going to rank my favorites um, from my fit, my least favorite uh, to my favorite. Um, and these are, um, these are my picks, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so my number one and number two are really easy. Um, the bottom three, um, they're kind of inter interchangeable, I think. Um, I just feel I have really strong feelings about the, the my top two. Um, but these others I don't have as strong a feeling about. Um, but there's good songs on all their albums. Um, just an incredible output. Um, these guys were certainly probably the most successful of the new wave bands. Um, the post-punk, if you will. Um, the bridge between punk and new wave. Um, you know, along with bands like Culture Club and Duran Duran, um, they were by far uh, the most successful, I'd say. Um, uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. My, uh, my fifth or my least favorite, um, police album is the debut, um, Outlandos Dia Moore from 1978. Um, definitely has some good songs on here though. So Lonely, Roxanne is probably the biggest hit on here. Uh, Can't Stand Losing You, Born in the 50s. I'd say those are probably my favorite three. Uh, Born in the 50s, Can't Stand Losing You, and So Lonely, um, which are kind of hits, um, but um, not as big as Roxanne. Roxanne was their first top 40. But, you know, not a bad album. Um, just not one that I, I think about very much and, I, and don't play very much, but definitely a good sample of um, New Wave coming out um, um, on the heels of punk in the late 70s. And coming in at number four, this is one that um, many people um, regard as their favorite police album um, and, and are always shocked when I tell people this is not one that uh, I currently hold that high up. Um, it's Synchronicity, their last album, 1983. Not a bad album. Um, same thing with El Landos. Um, Synchronicity 1 and 2, the songs are outstanding. Love both of those songs. Love um, King of Pain, Wrapped Around Your Finger, Murder by Numbers. Um, you know, there's all kinds of, um, the writing had gotten really complex at this point from Sting. You know, he was talking a lot about Carl Jung and different forms of meditation and psychotherapy. Um, he was very fascinated by that. And there was a lot of conspiracy theory about this album. You know, the Murder by Numbers story, you'll have to, look up on your own, but there's this whole uh, Illuminati theory about that song, and um, 
I'm not exactly sure of all the details, but uh, there's some tracks on here that I don't care for. I never need to hear Every Breath You Take Again. It's probably the, their biggest song of all. Um, I never need to hear, I don't like Mother, the Andy Summers uh, song. It's just, I don't know, avant-garde screaming. Mother, mother. I don't know. It's just not my, not my thing. But uh, yeah, not a bad album at all, especially King of Pain and Wrapped Around Your Finger. Wrapped Around Your Finger is a great song. Uh, let's see. So number three, um, you know, in the past I would have ranked Outlando Steel more probably in the place of this. These, these kind of go together to me. The first two albums, we got it at Blanc. It's my third favorite message in the bottle. is the biggest hit on this, but walking on the moon is my all time favorite police song probably. And that's on this. That's the other hit. Um, uh, but it's got the beds too big without you, uh, contact death wish. The song Regatta de Blanc, very good song. Um, but yeah, we got the picture of the three heads. Um, again, just like I'd lend those more, um, I'm almost reticent about putting synchronicity below this, but this is the one I listen to the most now between the two. Um, and then in the past, you know, Outlandos, I listened to more than this. So they're the bottom three, like I said, switch around, but uh, certainly not a bad album at all. Okay, let's see. And these are also, this album, my second choice, or my number two, um, was my number one at one point for years. And um, there's just some, half of the album I don't really listen to and half of it I do. And this is when they were really starting to get a lot more complex in the studio. Um, this is their third album, Zenyatta Mandata from 1980. Got the uh, the vinyl here as well. Um, Zenyatta Mandata was um, really kind of coming into the '80s. You know, you had the death of disco, you had the death of punk, and uh, or the ending of punk, I should say. And you punk kind of splintered off into three categories. You had the British synth pop, you had the post punk art bands, and then you had uh, hardcore punk. And Police were definitely more in line with the art stuff because um, they mixed elements of prog just being the more established musicians that they are but they certainly didn't you know they didn't sound like XTC I guess that's the closest thing Talking Heads Wire bands like that but um, for this album you know you've got the big hits where Don't Stand So Close To Me um, and uh, When The World Is Running Down Driven to Tears. Um, Voices, great song on this. Um, Canary in a Coal Mine. Voices Inside My Head, sorry. Um, I don't really listen to Don't Stand So Close To Me just because it's so overplayed. And I don't listen to the second half of the album much. Man in a Suitcase is a happy, upbeats reggae song. Um, but the blend of reggae and had always been kind of subtle on the first two albums. I mean, there was a track here and a track there, um, but they were really more of a, were like a punk band, right? A pop punk band. And um, they're kind of bringing more of the reggae into the fold and a lot more effects from Andy's uh, guitar pedals. I mean, I think Andy doesn't get enough credit. Um, obviously, a lot of the credit goes to Sting because Sting's the chief songwriter and uh, lyricist and everything. And then Stuart Copeland's considered one of the greatest drummers of all time. But uh, it was really Andy coming into his own on this album. And he, he, he and Alex Lifeson from Rush, I kind of compare. Uh, because, you know, at this time, Rush were doing Permanent Waves the same year. And they were really listening to a lot of the police. And being very influenced by Talking Heads and the new wave music that was coming out. And a lot of Alex's guitar pedals um, were similar to what Andy Summers was doing with the police at this time. So... This was a pinnacle album for that. Um, Love, Driven of Tears, and The World is Running Down, and Voices Inside My Head. I mean, those three songs cannot go wrong. Well, there's only one possible album that it could be at this point. Um, number one, it's the t-shirt I'm wearing. It's a masterpiece. I don't care what anybody says. I've seen police rankings where this ranks a lot lower. Um, almost at the bottom, and I just do not understand that. Um, it starts off with a lot of the hits that we 
all know spirits in the material world. Every little thing she knows is magic. Uh, Invisible Sun. I don't really need to hear those songs. Um, Invisible Sun is good. Um, there's a couple throwaway tracks. Hungry for You, um, I never listened to. And Omega Man, I never listened to. But the second half, um, Hungry for You, Too Much Information, Rehumanize Yourself, One World, Secret Ninja Gets the Secret Journey, and the final track, Darkness, is this little creepy, like, but pretty little um, soft piano ballad at the end. Just a great way to end an album. It's a very high-pitched album. It's a very dark album. It's got a lot of sinister qualities to it, some of the commentary on here. Um, and then it ends in that like really pretty thing at the end, the darkness. Um, the reggae stuff on Too Much Information in One World are just outstanding. Um, but, you know, it's one of my favorite albums of all time. It's certainly always been my favorite, for a long time, been my favorite you know, police album. And the album cover is just classic. I mean, come on. Uh, this was really a commentary on the digital age and technology. Uh, but it, more than that, you know, it got it got labeled as such, but it was really more about the human condition and um, the theme that kind of runs through a lot of police albums, um, which is about um, the sort of the the challenges of the uh, the individual in a world full of other people, technology, other things. Um, you really have to dig into these albums and you really have to like, don't take them on face value because I think a lot of Sting's writing is a lot more complex than people give it credit for. Um, it sounds like peace and love and he's talking about world problems but um, and societal problems. But, uh, you know, the theme on this, Ghosts in the Machine, Spirits in the Material World, you really have to think about what that means or what that meant at that time in 1981 when this was released and what it means now. There's a lot of messages on these albums that, that really ring true um, in 2022, 23. So um, I challenge anyone who's, who's not really delved into this band and thinks that the only thing this band ever did was Every Breath You Take and Roxanne. You really need to dig into, especially these two albums, uh, their uh, third and fourth album. Zenyatta Mandata and Ghost in the Machine. And that's it. That's all five albums uh, from The Police. Um, that concludes another ranking show here on Smoke Signals. Uh, be sure to put your comments in below and continue to pass the word um, for the Smoke Signals channel. I'm Ethan Morris, and until next time, take care.